Hey, well this series we're going to be looking at partial differentiation. I know that makes it sound like it's going to be easier in full differentiation, but it's actually in fact harder. So if you haven't seen my differentiation series, then you should click down there, there'll be a link to the playlist and take a look at that. So I'm going to start with a quick overview of just some basic notation that's going to be used. That would mean differentiating with respect to x, and it does not equal a function of x. This would mean, say, differentiating with respect to y. And this is the same as doing a partial derivative of f with respect to y. And say if we're doing, this would then be the second partial derivative with respect to x. And this could be given like that. So it's just a little bit of notation just for you to get the idea. Anyway, we're going to go through some problems here. I find this is the best way to learn partial differentiation, it's just to go through the problems and get used to how the rules work. And you can see that they don't have to be f of anything, they can be g of self, it doesn't have to be x and y, it could be r and theta like here, you can have um, more than two, you can have as many as you want, um, you can have quite complicated things going in. And we'll just see how we deal with all of this as we go through. So first we're going to start with question one. And I should say that um, for question five and six we're going to be finding second and third and fourth derivatives. We're going to be finding mixed derivatives, that kind of thing. If you just want to see that, then just skip to that part of the video. So for question one, we're going to differentiate first with respect to x. And we differentiate our x term normally then. There's no problems there. And then our y term, now when we differentiate respect to x, y gets treated as a constant, which means y is just going to disappear. So all of this is a constant here and it all goes. So we can differentiate now with respect to y. Now our x part is a constant, so that disappears and we just differentiate our y like we would normally, which is of course just going to be 6y squared. 2. We have x, y, and z, so we're going to differentiate first with respect to x. Now here our y is constant, and if you remember, x to the power of 1 by a constant just becomes the constant, so this is y, and the z term vanishes. Now if we differentiate with respect to y, same thing's going to happen, so we're just going to have x, and if we differentiate with respect to z, then all of this is constant and goes, so we just differentiate z, which just gives to z there. R3. So now we have a g and this is g of x. Now our x squared is just 2x like normal. Our y vanishes and here our 2y squared is our constant and again it's just x by a constant so the x vanishes and we're just left with our constant of 2y squared. g of y then our x vanishes and we're just left with our 2y and for the second part 2x is our constant but we take because it's y squared our 2 down and lower the power to 1 so we're left with 4xy for problem 4 then now this is of r and theta and what we're going to do is we're going to treat r first, so do z of r, and now our cosine and our sine are both constants, so we're just left with cos theta plus sine theta, and if we just do it with respect to theta, I'm going to treat do this side first, so r is our constant and sine goes to cosine, so this is r cosine theta, and then I do the other side, and I did it this way around, and you'll see why, because cosine goes to minus sine, so we're left with minus r sine theta. I did it this way around, so we don't have to write minus and a plus as well. It's just a nicer way to write it. So now we're going to come on to problem five. And for this, I'm going to find the first, second, third, and fourth derivatives of x. 
So first with respect to x, we're going to have 3y is constant there, and the x power goes down, so we're left with 6xy. That vanishes, and then this goes down here, so we're left with plus 16x cubed. So sorry, this is our function with respect to x. So our function with respect to x twice is going to be now that x is just going to vanish, it's going to leave us with 6y plus, is that 54? Yeah, 54x squared. x three times is just going to be, that's going to vanish, and that's going to leave us with 108x. Now for the last one, I want to swap to the other notation because it's quicker at this point. It's the 4 and that's just going to leave us with 108. That's as far as we can go with that. We can do it to the fifth and then this will just give us zero. So now I'm going to do it with respect um, to y. And at this point our y vanishes and we're left with 3x, as a con 3x squared as a constant. Our y vanishes there leaving us 2 and this whole term disappears there y twice then, this is a constant and this is a constant because we've only got y to the power 1 in the original function, so this gives us 0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take a function of xy and then yx. And I'll tell you now that these two should be equal, if I've done everything right. So first we take our derivative of x is up here and we differentiate this with respect to y. So here our y just vanishes and leaves us 6x and there's no y terms here so this is constant and vanishes. And here we take our function first with respect to y and differentiate with respect to x. So our 2 goes down leaving us 6x, our power goes down to 1 and our 2 vanishes. So we can see these are in fact equal as they should be. And if you were to differentiate either of these again with respect to the other, the, um, if you would differentiate either of these with respect again, you could say if I have x, f of x, y, x, so differentiate with respect to x, this gives us 6, and f of um, x, y, y would just be 0. And for my final example, I'm just going to go straight ahead and find. Um, the mixed derivative of this, so I'm going to be looking for f of x, y, z. Now you could look at this and say there's no y or z terms in this, so this part we don't need to deal with to find this if we're just looking for this because that's going to vanish. But we won't, we'll go through and do it properly. So f of x then is going to be equal to 8x minus y squared, z squared f of x y, now with respect to y, of course this vanishes and just leaves us with minus 2 y z squared and finally if we just do with mixed for all we're just going to be left with minus 4 y z. Now I know that was a little bit fast through a lot of it but it was a lot of examples and if you just look over them again if you stuck at all it will definitely help just getting used to how the rules work um, I might just do one final example, which is just if we had a function of y and z, and it was equal to e to the y and z, which is always a nice example. If you were to differentiate this with respect to y, then you just get z e to the y z, and with respect to z, you just get um, sorry y over the e yz. As you can see there the constants up there and they get moved down. And I'll have a little think about why that one works now as well. Anyway go through and have a go at number six and um, find as many derivatives as you can with respect to r, um, with respect to x, y and z. Mix them up a bit and see what you can find. It's good practice. So if you want to see the last which will be the series on differentiation you can go ahead and click there. You want to see the next video in this series go ahead and click there, or if you just want to see more from my channel, go ahead and click down there now.